What's up, what's up, y'all? Coast Get Funny back with another one. You know what I'm saying? Another one up here doing it. Drawing a wonderful day. This is a sidebar. And um, this one is, hey, America, it's time to end Zimbabwe economic punishment. You know, but this would happen when you when you don't control the re- same thing in the black community, same thing going on in Africa. This will happen when you don't control your economic resources and stuff like this. Stuff like this can happen to you. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to read into this and see what they're doing. U.S. sanctions are undermining Zimbabwe access to credit and investment. They're supposedly above about the rule of law, but there's a likely anterior motive. Almost a year since the honorable guy was moved, and months since the election, Zimbabwe economic crisis continued to deepen. A severe lack of foreign currency has crippled local businesses. Inflation is skyrocketing in dire fuel shortages, medical supplies, and other essentials threaten social arrest. There are many reasons for worrying about the economic situation. Among them are decades of government mismanagement and widespread corruption and mistrust, but a significant part of the responsibility for going on crisis is in the hands of the policymakers thousands of miles away. Ordinarily, one would suspect Zimbabwe economy to be improving right now. It is authoritarian strongman Mugabe is not any longer in power. The multi-party elections have been recently held and a new government which includes respected their technocrats in some key positions has repeatedly declared their country open for business. Right, just get ready to sell it all now. Open for business. One would expect these changes to prompt promises of Western development assistance and access to the MIF and World Bank credit, you know what I'm saying, and international investment. All these things will be fundamental and stabilize the Zimbabwe economy and many Western partners are keen to invest. But this re-engagement has been made much more difficult because of U.S. sanctions. These measures are undermining Zimbabwe's ability to access credit from the international financial institution and attract much needed foreign investment. Renewing U.S. sanctions. On paper, U.S. Zimbabwe democracy and the Economic Recovery Act, Zender, Z-I-D-E-R-A, is about a rule of law. It was passed in 2001 to hide Zimbabwe's land seizures and was reportedly a reaction to the Zimbabwe government not protecting the property rights of white farmers. See, and this is the thing y'all gotta understand about white supremacy, you know, that we don't understand as African people worldwide. Whites protect their whites worldwide. The United States is doing this a punishment of white nationalism to protect their people worldwide. Something that we don't do. You know what I'm saying? So, the act was a part of the United States, UK efforts to cut off leading in, in, in international finance institutions and oppose political X9 sanctions and, and isolate Zimbabwe. Specifically, Zilda placed individual states of Mugabe and in his cronies and is also enshrined into law the U.S. stands in the funding for the likes of IMF and the World Bank cannot be reinstated until the lack was if lifted. So this can't be reinstated until the act is lifted. When Mugabe was finally removed in 2017, many hope his departure will pave the way for Zimbabwe in isolation. President Emerson, Emerson Mugawa vowed to break his dictatorial predecessor and allow democracy to flourish. The UK and others signaled the weird willingness to improve relations. Yet Zender remains in place. Not only that, in July, U.S. Congress introduced an amendment version of it, passed days before Zimbabwe's first ever election without Mugabe. This renewed act includes extra demands that the vote be fair and free. When you, hey, here you go. You know what I'm saying? When you don't control your own economy, that's what happens. When you let foreigners control your stuff, they can dictate the policy inside your land. This is economic colonization. You know what I'm saying? We're just, you know, so we should already know this. It's, the test, it's debatable whether Zimbabwe's 30th of July election passed the test. On one hand, the defeated opposition alleged widespread fraud and irregularities. The army killed six people who were protesting the electoral commission delays in announcing the result. On the other hand, the polls are probably exclusive free, fair, and fair elections ever held in Zimbabwe. The real reason behind Zenderan. Either way, President Trump has amended Zenderan into law shortly after, and in theory, it is possible that U.S. continued punishment in Zimbabwe is about rule of law. But this seems unlikely. Instead, it's more of the real motivations or reasons lie elsewhere. 
When Zeno was recently amended, it added another important requirement. It stated that Zimbabwe and the South African Development Community, the Southern African Development Community, excuse me, or SADC, should reinforce SADC rule, tribunal rulings from 2007 to 2010. Here they go again, jumping in, in the affairs of the people. Including 18 disputes involving employment, commercial, and human rights cases surrounding disposed Zimbabwean commercial farmers and agricultural companies. So what in the main, what they're trying to say is this: they should get reparations for what happened during that time. From the time that Zimbabwe kicked out the white farmers, they feel they should get reparations. These rulers claim that Zimbabwe land reform was illegal, and the tribunal demanded that the government pay compensation reparations or compensation to the dispossessed white farmers to the sum of what these claims will cost have been estimated at 30 billion 18 years since the land seizure the landscape in Zimbabwe has dramatically changed instead of 6,000 commercial farmers controlling 70 percent of the valuable farmland there are estimated 200,000 small-scale farmers in 2018 the country experienced its total its largest tobacco harvest ever this reality on the ground is accepted by most Zimbabwe's, most of Zimbabwe's, both black and white, and so rather than being a realistic demand, the inclusion of this steep demand is amended in Zendra, had interpreted by many South Africans, Southern Africa, as a warning. As South Africa and Namibia currently debate how to address historical injustice around the land, Zimbabwe's heart, the land, right? As South Africa and Namibia currently debate how to address the historical injustice around the land. Zimbabwe's heart should be viewed as a threat of what not to do. Adding weight to this, these suspicions, Trump tweeted his concerns that about South African land reform process shortly after signing the agenda into law. He uh, is reported to have been informed by a French white lobby, white group lobbyists in South Africa, who have a growing lobbyist with white supremacist groups in the United States. Right? So remember, these groups, these white farmers' lobbies in, in South Africa have a lobby group with some white supremacists in the United States to go talk to the president. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. That's how they're working on a, on a pan-European scale. You know what I'm saying? They're pan-European. They're going to do. They're gonna protect white people wherever they at. You understand that? No long, how much longer can Zimbabwe economic punishment be justified? It is about property rights and land reform. Will the new dispensation ever be recognized without the country being drawn further into debt? If it is about the rule of law and politically retaliated related violence, then would not the likes of Kenya, Cameroon, Uganda, and many more warrant similar measures? Under the current conditions, it is Zimbabwe citizens that are suffering the most. Zendra is not so much about stopping land reform or punishing the elite, but it contributing to the economic collapse, why which hits ordinary people the hardest. Lines of petrol, which is gas, Shortages of basic medicine and businesses closure bring much more bring more hunger, disease, and social instability. The new Zimbabwe government certainly has to do to strengthen its transfer transparency, tackling corruption, and safeguarding human rights. But Zendra is not so much about the, as such concerns, even as it were. It will not be helping. While President Trump demands an American sovereignty, Zimbabwe's ability to manage its own economy is severely hampered by the U.S. No country in our globalized world can both balance its budget and its stability as currency without support. Zimbabwe has already paid the price. Enough of the price already. And this should tell you something right then and there. You know what I'm saying? This is how the game is going down. Dr. John Henry Clark told us when you don't control your currency, you don't control your land, your resources, and stuff like that. Foreigners will come in and divide your land up and parcel and sell that parcel back to you in bits and pieces. And this was happening in Zimbabwe. Not just Zimbabwe, but all of Africa. You know what I'm saying? And we got to look more into Zendera. You know what I'm saying? What he was talking about. You know, as a punishment. Zendera, like I said, when Zendera was recently amended, it had another important requirement. It stated that Zimbabwe and the Southern African Development Community should enforce that the SAC tribunal rules from 2007 to 2010, which 18 disputes devolving employment, commercial, and human rights cases around the dispossessed Zimbabwe commercial farmers and agricultural companies. What they're doing, that's what they're doing it for. They're doing it for the companies. These rulers claim Zimbabwe land reform was illegal. Who in the hell makes it illegal?
How the hell are you going to take the sovereignty rights of these people? And the tribunal demanded that the government pay compensation to dispossessed white farmers, the sum of which claims have been estimated up to $30 billion. So for these 18, for these years, these, these farmers been gone, you know what I'm saying, they kicked out the country, or Zimbabwe, they about to get $30 billion in reparations for their land, stolen. Now, we haven't got reparations yet. But you got to understand, this is a cold on a racial, on a, on, a, on a higher thing. They're pan-European. White folks is going to come together unequivocally. But matter of fact, Dr. Umar Johnson said it best, you know what I'm saying? The Anglo-Saxon think he's better than the Italian. The Italian think they're better than the Irish. You know what I'm saying? The Irish think they're better than the, you know, than the French. You know what I'm saying? The Jews think they're better than all of them. But when it comes to all that stuff, unequivocally, they'll stop that shit. they stop their beef among themselves and unequivocally come down and say, we all better than you Africans. And we got to understand that. You know, people still not waking up to that fact. You know, getting disillusioned by some, some dream. Anyway, this is a close to the fun day. Subscribe to the channel. Much love to all you and yours. Peace.